Like how Star Wars determined what space operas would look like and feel like, Star Trek determined what tech they would have, especially when space war was engaged. The ships would fire beam weapons at each other like phasers and protect themselves with so-called deflector shields. Every sci-fi ship now has some version of these shields, so how do they work? In the future, most popular sci-fi presents, beam weapons are the most common armament, and so shielding that could stop the pew-pews were developed. We've already figured out how to stop bullets and other so-called kinetic kill projectiles pretty well, but in an age of space battles, what is a plausible solution for preventing the vaporization of both our hulls and our fleshy bodies? That depends on what we mean by deflection. Very strictly speaking, deflection is an object's change in acceleration after interacting with some solid surface or field. Deflection off a solid surface is pretty obvious. Engage, impulse power. It's even obvious with something like a laser and a mirror. But deflector shields aren't solid, so what is changing the acceleration of the phasers we want to deflect? Well, that depends on what phasers are. Star Trek canon has referred to phasers as both plasma-based weapons and particle beam weapons. If they are particle beam weapons, then they may be something like this, a stream of incredibly fast-moving particles that are charged like helium nuclei or electrons. Now, when these particles interacted with an object, they would hit the atoms in that object and rip their electrons off, ionizing those atoms. Ionizing radiation is, for example, what makes nuclear weapons so dangerous, even if you're nowhere near the fireball. Here comes the shockwave. Oh! 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 oh. <sighs> if the phasers are plasma-based, then... Wait, it set to educate. If the phasers are plasma-based, then they're most likely shooting something like an ionized gas, which is just gas with its electrons ripped off, but those electrons are sticking around in a kind of electron atom soup, and it's all contained by a magnetic field. The plasma that you're probably most familiar with is the ionized gas in something like a neon sign. But whether they are plasma-based or particle-based, phaser beams are probably composed of particles that interact with electric and magnetic fields. And that's shields up, and that's how we'll deflect them. Electricity and magnetism are intimately linked in physics. That's why it's called electromagnetism. One can influence and create the other, and vice versa. To demonstrate this, imagine that this is a magnetic field, and the lines are dots because they're going outwards right into your face. Now, we put a charged particle in this field. This charged particle, once it starts moving, will experience a so-called Lorenz force dependent on its charge. But what really matters here... Increase power to four displays! Thank you. But what really matters here is particle motion. If a charged particle starts moving in this field, it will experience a force up or down, but because it has some velocity, it will curve. For example, if it had a positive charge, it would curve upwards. And if it had a negative charge in this field, it would curve downwards. We can take advantage of this interaction brilliantly in real life, and it works in three dimensions, which means, oh, the next part of the, the video is through a, a Jeffrey's tube, so just... Which means... Ow! Which means... Red alert! Because both plasma and particle beam weapons are composed of charged particles, a sufficiently strong magnetic bubble around a spacecraft would interact with those charged particles and curve them away from the ship's hull and crew. It would deflect them. Magnetic shielding deals with plasma and particle beams, but not with lasers or other high-energy radiation like X-rays and gamma rays, which phasers could also be. So, can we do better? Four. There are four. Right? Yeah! What if magnetic shields were a bit more active? If magnetic shields accumulated plasma, either from incoming solar wind or from venting fusion or antimatter engines, then the shields could deflect incoming particles even better and block lasers. That's because at some distance away from a ship with a magnetic shield, plasma will start to bunch up and become dense. 
And because plasma itself is charged, it will create its own electric and magnetic field. What this does, in effect, is extend where the magnetic shield is acting, making everything more safe. If it starts curving further out from the ship, more of the crew is safe. This all sounds very science fiction-y, of course, but it's absolutely a plausible shield design. Scientists have even confirmed in the lab that magnetic fields can accumulate and use plasma in this way, and that this design could theoretically scale up to a spacecraft that would protect astronauts on long journeys through space from harmful cosmic and solar radiation. And this setup makes sense because it's what's protecting us right now. The Earth isn't perfectly round, look it up. In the upper atmosphere, there's a sublayer called the ionosphere, where cosmic and solar radiation ionizes the very thin gas up there and produces a thin layer, <laughs> thin layer of plasma. This plasma helps deflect and absorb harmful cosmic radiation, like X-rays and gamma rays, and charge particles that would otherwise be like being hit with particle beams from space all the time. And it gets even better. When charged particles interact with the ionosphere, they produce brilliant auroras that look like this. And what does it look like when a Star Trek style deflector shield gets hit with a phaser? Oh, exactly the same. So, how do Star Trek's deflector shields work? Well, based on the most commonly used weapon in the franchise's universe, the phaser, the most plausible option would be active shields of magnetoplasma. It's plausible because we're already looking into similar technology to protect us on space journeys. The Earth is doing something similar by protecting us from particle beam-like stuff with the upper atmosphere, and it looks totally right. But maybe best of all, a shield of magnetoplasma isn't technobabble. Because science. Shields up. Shields up. Sh <laughs>